Hi, my name is Dr. John Viard, and I want to talk to you about a very interesting topic called fecal transplantation. You know, researchers are now realizing if they take the microbes and the fecal matter out of a healthy individual and put it into an unhealthy individual, in many cases the unhealthy individual gets well. The, the microbes of the body seem to be responsible for our immune health, and in fact, of the 10,000 different strains of bacteria in the intestinal tract, there seems to be a strain for just about everything. Since we are 90% microbial and only 10% human with regard to our cells, then it seems like if we can do our best to support the 90%, they seem to support us quite well. Thus enters fecal transplantation. So they took, years ago they figured this out, they took the fecal matter from a skinny mouse and they put it into a fat mouse and the fat mouse got skinny. They took the fecal matter out of the fat mouse and put it into a skinny mouse and the skinny mouse got fat. They took a fat mouse who had a gastric bypass surgery to help them lose weight and they did lose weight. And they took the fecal matter now of the fat, the skinny mouse from the gastric bypass and they put it into a fat mouse and that fat mouse got skinny. It's just quite incredible. What, they, what, what these bugs are actually doing. And when you think about it, they're the 90%. You know, we eat, breathe, and live to support probably the 90% of us, and they probably support us more or less as an afterthought. They took the fecal matter from some very aggressive, competitive mice, and they put that fecal matter into some very fearful mice, and the very fearful mice became competitive and driven. So we now know that 95% of the serotonin is produced in the gut wall, 5% is in your brain at any given time, but 95% of those mood stabilizing neurotransmitters live and are stored and manufactured in your gut. We also now know that guess who makes those serotonins and neurotransmitters? It's the microbes. Healthy microbes provide healthy neurotransmitters which provide healthy mood stability. It's really quite phenomenal. So when you take the the good microbes out of a healthy, stable individual and put it in an unhealthy individual, it's reasonable for us to assume that that's going to help them become more stable. Fascinating research, really. They took the fecal matter out of, it, out of an individual who had heart issues, weight issues, and circulation issues. Um, but it's out of a healthy person, they put it in a person with those concerns, and those per the person with those concerns actually got healthy. So again and again and again, we're seeing that these fecal transplants are working wonders. Now, what's interesting is that certain probiotics actually are doing similar things. Now, like I said, many of the probiotics that we buy don't actually attach or colonize. They're what's called transient. But in many cases, some of them actually do attach to the intestinal tract. And that's very important. So they took some mice who were also very fearful, and they gave them these probiotics that attached for 28 days. And these mice became more aggressive, more, uh, more competitive, more insert calm under stressful situ situations, and more adventurous. So we do know that certain probiotics work, but it's very important to understand what kind. There's a couple of them that I like that I, that I, that I write about and you can get more research on them on my website at lifespot.com. But one of those is Bifidobacteria lactis HN019. This is a bacteria that was developed or discovered in 1899. It's been around for a long time. But this particular strain of this bacteria has been shown to weather the storm of the upper digestive acid, the bile, and actually attach to the intestinal wall. Very, very important that you get probiotics that actually do that. Otherwise, you're not actually proliferating the growth of good bacteria and allowing the bacteria to proliferate and create diverse microbes in your intestinal tract. Another one is called Lactobacillus plantarum. This is one that you see in uh, fermented fruits and vegetables, uh, fermented uh, cabbage, sauerkrauts, things like that, that also uh, exist as probiotics that actually will weather the upper digestive storm and actually get through the intestinal wall. It's also very important to realize that we oftentimes have, you know, we're missing many strains of bacteria and we have to, you know, help the body scrub out the bad bacteria. So there are certain yeasts that have been around for a long time to help scrub the bad bacteria out of the intestinal tract, one called Saccharomyces boulardii. And this uh, yeast is very, very important to help, again, heal, support, repair the intestinal wall, but also, more importantly, actually scrub, help the good bacteria 
you know, rally to support the growth of the good and to inhibit the growth of the bad. So you really want to look at, at a strategy to, you know, to revive the intestinal mucosa. This is a very, very important strategy that we must have in our day. When I think about how do we do that, well, good quality probiotics that restore the gut are very important. Eating foods that are balanced, you know, good bacteria eat raw vegetables. They eat cellulose. Different microbes live on different plants. Very important concept. And so, because they like different plants, and if you eat the plants whole, you get those bacteria. If you have an intestinal tract and a digestive system that can support the growth of those bacteria. So it's very important that we eat you know, a variety of different vegetables. I like to, make, to, make, to attempt to make your plate about 50% vegetables. They eat what we have always thought we, did, we had no use for, which was the cellulose of the vegetables. That's the importance of it. So when we juice the vegetables and throw away the cellulose, that's the food that your good microbes at the 90% actually eat. So it's very important to get that. Fermented foods, I always like to see you know, a plate with 50% vegetables, a quarter protein, a quarter good healthy starches, and then try to always have something on your plate that's naturally probiotic, whether it be fer fermented fruits or fermented vegetables or a, a, whole, a raw cheese or yogurt or kefir or some type of natural probiotic support. Uh, fermented, even in Ayurvedic medicine, we have dosas and idlis and uh, paneer, foods that have been naturally fermented, yogurts, lassis, these are foods that were always there. In particularly every culture had their natural source of probiotics. So make sure that your food and your diet starts to reintroduce some natural cultures, create better and stronger digestion, and then think about you know, strategies for what I like to call gut revival, ways to really bring the good bacteria back into abundance and allow them to rally against the bad. Thank you for listening. I'm Dr. John Beyer.